In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at an all new stack from T Motor. Now, this is a 20 by 20 stack that comes with the ESC flight controller. It is an F7. It does have a 10 volt regulator and it does have a direct connection to the DJI setup. However, just because it's incorporating the DJI setup doesn't mean they've even removed the OSD. You still have your on screen display for analog setups if you needed that, which is really, really nice. So we're going to cover today is we're going to go ahead and take a look at some of the accessories, also a detailed connection setup guide. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get started. So taking a look at some of the accessories here, we can tell they have a pre-made XT60 made for us, which is a 14 gauge wire XT60 right here, which is really nice to see. Also a baggie with 10 rubber grommets because the ESC and the flight controller or the ESC and the flight controller uh, incorporate these rubber grommets and also some metal screws and some metal nuts as well. So that's really nice to get two extra rubber grommets in case you lose one. You do get the ESC with the capacitor pre-installed and they are using a Rubicon capacitor here. This is a 35 volt 470 microfarad uh, capacitor that's set up right here. You also obviously do get the flight controller, which is an F7, and we get the connector for the DJI setup. This is for the uh, larger DJI modules. As you can tell, you just plug that in, you plug this right in there, and it routes basically everything for you. So that's really nice to see here. And they also give us the connector, which will route our ESC to our flight controller. Now, there are a lot of options on this uh, flight controller, which we're going to take a look at in a bit here, such as pit mode and a 10 volt regulator. And we also obviously do have an F7 memory. And um, yeah, so it's really nice. We're going to take a closer look at that in a bit here. So for the ESC, they went into a kind of a strange design here because the FETs are so tiny, but they also do have some sort of a heat sink built in within them here to keep them cool. But I have no idea how these are going to test right here. Uh, these are, as I believe, D-Shot 1200, so our D, uh, BL Heli 32 ESCs here. Filtration is somewhat minimal but it's really good that they've provided that low ESR capacitor. And if you didn't know how to install this, just a quick heads up, this should be in the back and you could read motor one, two, three, four. Install it just like this in your quadcopter or else it'll never fly unless you know what you're doing. The camera should be right there in the front. Same thing with the flight controller here. Watch that arrow right there. The USB should be on top and to the left here. And this is how it would be set up in your quadcopter. So now let's go ahead and jump into the advanced breakdown of the uh, flight controller and also the beginner setup guide right after that. All right, guys. So right now we're going to be doing the advanced breakdown of the T-Motor flight controller here. So let's go ahead and take a look at it. There isn't much going on here. And it's really nice that they're able to fit all this stuff into one 20 by 20 board here. So on the left here, we're looking at the top side. And as we can tell, we have our on-screen display, which is really nice. And at the same time, we also do have a connector for the DJI setups here, the DJI HD module setups. And they're using tantalum capacitors for the on-screen display, which is really good. Minimizes the chances of lines or your OSD flickering here. And uh, this seems like a barometer, but I don't think it's a barometer. I think it's a 27 megahertz crystal for the on-screen display here. Here we have our boob button if we ever get stuck, 3.3 volt regulator, MPU 6000 gyro. And here we have two uh, selectable pads, which are very important. Uh, this one, not as important. This is uh, to enable pit mode. So if you wanted to set that up, which means um, it'll basically power off your video transmitter, but you'd have to bridge these in order to enable them in the software. So you have to keep that in mind. And for the receiver side, as you can tell, this is meant to be for the receiver side. We have RSSI, we have PPM. I don't know if anybody still uses PPM. And we have RX1 and RX2 here. These are for the receiver. However, here's the plus, which is going to be the positive for the receiver and the ground. Now, for the positive side, uh, it's not going to give any power until you actually uh, bridge one of these two here. So if you wanted 3.3 volt, you'd have to solder these two together. And if you wanted 5 volt, then the middle one with the bottom one here, you'd have to solder those two together. And that would give the output power to this plus sign right here. So for example, let's remove these. We wanted 5 volts because most of our receivers nowadays are 5 volts. Then this pad right here would be 5 volt. And if you didn't bridge these, then you will get no power and you'd be going crazy while your receiver is not turning on. And that would be the case. We also do have the 10 volt broken out down here and another one broken out right here. This is camera control. Uh, this is really nice. You have two 10 volt pads, which you could use. You could either use it for uh, your camera if you wanted to, but I'd recommend you go with that five volt. 
And if you wanted the 10 volt uh, for your video transmitter, this is the area where you'd want it because they also have a T3 right there for you for like smart audio or RC tram protocol. That's for the analog uh, setups also. And uh, you can tell right here, R1 is being uh, set up also used for the DJI. So if you don't have this, uh, if you don't have the controller for the DJI, you want to remove uh, these two right here wires, the last two wires from this connector, and just worry about T3 and R3, which would be the uh, MSP serial protocol between uh, the DJI module. So it can give you the telemetry data, ground, and the power for the DJI module right there. Uh, we still have qu quite a lot of things going on for it. And um, that's uh, currently it for the advanced breakdown. There isn't really much else to say. Here we have memory. Again, it's an F7. And we have our voltage regulators. We have two uh, voltage regulators. We have a 10 volt and we have the 5 volt here. And uh, that's about it for the advanced breakdown. Let's go ahead and jump into the beginner setup guide here. All right, guys, so right now we're going to be talking about the FPV camera. Now, most of these cameras take anywhere between 5 volts all the way up to 30 plus volts. But again, even though it does that, I really recommend you set it up on a 5 volt regulator. Just stick to a 5 volt because this reduces the chances of you getting some weird lines or some weird flickers in your video feed, which could be really annoying and hinder your flying performance. So, for example, here it says VCC because it does that. But we always want to give it just that 5 volts. It makes things so much better here. Now, the place where we want to go ahead and set up our 5 volts, there's plenty of places actually where we can do that. But we can grab our first 5 volt from this right there, right at the edge right there. And that would give our camera 5 volts. Then we're going to need a ground. Uh, and it's so, it's so weird because the ground is this far away right here. Let's actually use a different color. We're going to use white for that. So we're going to grab our ground wire right there. This is for the camera. This is how it was intended to be installed. But again, you could change out the uh, layout if you wanted to, but make sure you get a ground also. Here's the VI, which means video input. And that is going to be for your camera right there. And that's about it. This is the video line. So the camera needs positive and a negative, which are the white and red wires right here. And the video is going to be the video signal coming in. And it goes into the flight controller. Now, why does it go into the flight controller? Is because it goes through this chip right here, which overlays the useful information, such as your battery um, and any many other things as well. And then it'll output that back out to your video, especially on analog. And if it's not on analog it'll go through the UART for the DJI stuff here and that's about it for the FPV camera very simple stuff let's go to the next step all right guys so in this part of the video we're going to be talking about how to connect for example SBUS also IBUS for FlySky and also the TBS uh, Crossfire so we'll just say TBS there we go TBS. So we're going to show all these. Now it's actually going to be pretty identical because this is an F7 flight controller and they all go into basically the same place. So let's get started here. First of all, we'll start off with uh, just an S bus. So we're going to use the green wire here. So S bus is supposed to be, or at least when they've designed this, they want you to stick it on R1, which would be RX1 here. And it'll be very simple for you to follow along with the instructions uh, from their web page also uh, of how to set this up in Betaflight. Basically, you just uh, enable Serial RX in the Ports tab on UART1. So this is SBUS right here. Very simple stuff. Now, how would we connect the IBUS signal? Then we're going to jump into the power in a little bit here. So an IBUS signal is going to be also the same exact thing. There's nothing else to do here. IBUS and SBUS are going to go in the same place. Now, let's just say we have a TBS crossfire. We're going to do that down here. We're just going to call it TBS. Now, those usually have two pads. They will have an RX and they will have a TX. So we're going to say TX right there. And I'm going to remove this from here and we'll just call it down here TBS. So if you have the TBS crossfire. Um, so what you want to do is you want to grab the TX of your TBS, the pad that says TX. And we're just going to do it like that. And that's going to go exactly in the same place as the SBUS and IBUS. However, now we have the RX, which this thing will receive data. That's what the RX stands for. It's going to receive data. So we're going to need a transmit pin from the flight controller, which is usually a T. And it's right over here. So we're just going to go ahead and grab that, set that up, and bam, we're done with the signal wires. Now comes the power. Now the power is usually pretty straightforward. However, here there is a little extra step that we're going to have to take into consideration, which we're going to cover as well. So first of all, let's start with the power. So here's the power signal. Uh, you would hopefully know which one's the five volt on your receiver here. And that's where, it, well, that's where it's gonna go, the five volt. And next one over is going to be ground. We're gonna use white here and it's right there. And bam, there we go, we'll call this ground, ground. 
Now, when you set this all up and you boot it up, the thing is, it, your receiver will not boot, basically, because on the other side of the flight controller, if we actually bring this in and move it somewhere a little bit nicer, so sorry about the little messy layout, but if we look at the back side of the flight controller, there's going to be this little pad right here, and I think it's under this right there. Yeah, it's by the USB, so it's on the back side of this section right there. And what you can see is we can see three pads here. Now, if you're using any of these three receivers, then what you want to do is you want to add solder on the middle one and this one, connect those two together. And what that'll do is it'll output five volts on this line. Now, if yours was a 3.3 volt, then you're going to want to do the 3.3 the volt with the middle one right here. Then this will become 3.3 volts. Uh, however, again, if you're using any of the ones that I have listed down here, you want to connect the five volts. So we want to connect those two and that should be five volts. Then you're good to go. And that's about it for this step. Let's go ahead and jump into the next step. All right, so in this part of the video, we are going to be covering the video transmitter, to be exact, the analog variants. Now, the first thing you need to identify, which is very important, is what your video transmitter takes as a power input. There's only two in the market, five volts and seven to whatever volts, we'll just say XX volts. So you need to identify which one you have here. We'll call this the battery voltage video transmitter and we'll call this a 5 volt video transmitter. I'll be showing you both. First of all, let's start with the battery voltage video transmitter and that's going to basically go on the 10 volt right there. So we're going to go ahead and grab the red wire here and we're just going to set that up right over here. And that is the 10 volts for battery voltage video transmitters. Now, if yours was a 5 volt, the only difference of the connection set up here is only going to be this red wire. So if you had the 5 volt version, then you're going to want to set up the red wire right there for your 5 volt. So again, this is the only difference between those two video transmitters. The, the battery voltage video transmitter will go on the 10 volt and your 5 volt will go on this 5 volt. We can't use this one because we used this for the camera earlier. And that's about it here. So now we need ground. So always the power. I always recommend setting up the power first. So we're going to go ahead and grab ground. And we could basically grab ground from anywhere, any of those G pads. But we'll just take it from here because it's right next to it. And it's just going to make everything so much more simple. Now the next thing we need is the video line, which is usually the yellow wire here. So let's go ahead and grab that real quick. And that's going to go into VO. So we're going to have to cross over here. I'm going to go right there. This is video output. And because the camera comes in on a video input, it goes through here, it goes through this chip. This chip puts all the useful information and then spits it back out to the video transmitter right over here. And you'll be able to get that nice telemetry data that you want. So now we're left with one more wire, usually sometimes three more wires, which would be another black and a red one, which would say five volt. But be careful because that's a five volt output and you want to completely ignore that. Those are usually used for RC wings uh, where they don't have a flight controller and the video transmitter usually powers on the camera. So you want to ignore those. But there is one little extra one that's going to be the, uh, for example, smart, they call it smart audio or the IRC tramp protocol. And usually it would be green or purple or something of that nature. And the place where you want to set this wire up is going to be, so it's going to be right here on T3. So this is a TX3. And now it's going to be the place where you set up your ports tab. You go under UART3 peripherals and you choose whether you have smart audio, video transmitter, or IRC. And that's found in the documentation. I think this one right here was smart audio protocol and this will allow you to change the channel and output power through the on-screen display instead of having to come here and play around with the button and start changing stuff so yeah that's the only thing you really don't need to connect it but if you do connect it it makes your life a little bit easier and with that being said that's about it for this video guys i really hope you guys enjoyed it uh please come join my patreon i do a ton of giveaways and i do you get access to a lot of crazy stuff secret access shop which is my shop where i sell stuff for like super cheap that i've used and just no longer using you also get access to my open hardware uh schematic files for the flight controller as well as escs and well that's really it guys everything's linked down below if you could check those out it's a great support channel i'll see you guys in the next one peace